All right, folks, buckle up. Today's joke takes us to the most epic war story ever. Or at least it would be epic if I knew any actual history. But fear not, because I have a special brand of historical knowledge. Think Wikipedia after a few too many rum punches. Wink, wink. Let's see if we can unearth a funny nugget from the dusty battlefield of my brain. The Global Cafeteria Brawl. A look at World War II. Imagine the world as a giant high school cafeteria, buzzing with students from all corners of the globe. In one corner sits Germany, the resident bully, fueled by a desire for more territory and a grudge against the victors of the previous cafeteria brawl, World War I. They start snatching lunch money, resources, from weaker countries like Austria and Czechoslovakia. France and Britain, the cafeteria monitors, see this and worry. They don't want to fight, but they also can't let Germany keep pushing everyone around. When Germany grabs all of Poland's lunch, invades Poland, it's the last straw. France and Britain declare war, essentially starting a cafeteria brawl. Across the table sits Italy, Germany's best friend, ally. They're not the strongest fighters, but they love to brag and join the fight to impress everyone. Japan, another bully on the other side of the cafeteria, sees this as their chance. They launch a surprise attack on America's best friend, Hawaii's lunch line, bombing Pearl Harbor. Furious, America joins the fight, turning the cafeteria into a chaotic food fight. Tanks become makeshift battering rams, airplanes rain down mashed potatoes, bombs, and soldiers fling sporks, grenades, at each other. It's a total mess. The fight goes global. The cafeteria brawl quickly spills outside. Germany attacks the Soviet Union, hoping for a quick victory. But the Soviets fight back fiercely, like a lunch lady defending her precious cafeteria supplies. Meanwhile, Japan tears through Southeast Asia, conquering territories like they're stealing lunch trays. The tide turns. The fight drags on for years, leaving everyone exhausted and hungry, resource depleted. The good guys, the allies, including the US, Britain, the Soviet Union, and China, band together. They outsmart and overpower the bad guys, the Axis, Germany, Italy, and Japan. Detention for everyone. The Allies win, but at a terrible cost. Millions are dead, cities are in ruins, and the cafeteria is a wreck. Germany, Italy, and Japan get the ultimate detention. They're occupied by the Allies and forced to rebuild what they destroyed. Lessons learned. World War II was a harsh reminder of the dangers of unchecked aggression and nationalism. After the dust settled, the cafeteria monitors, victorious allies, created a new system, the United Nations, to try and prevent such a massive brawl from ever happening again. This is just a simplified snapshot of a complex event. There are many important details and figures left out. But hopefully, it piques your interest and gives you a starting point to learn more about this pivotal moment in history. History buffs might scoff at the spork throwing and dodgeball references, but this lighthearted approach highlights the underlying reasons why tensions flared. Germany, resentful of the harsh treatment it received after the previous cafeteria brawl, World War I, felt they deserved more power and territory. This insatiable hunger for dominance, coupled with charismatic but ruthless leaders like Hitler, set the stage for a new conflict. Just like when the cafeteria bully snatches someone's lunch money, Germany's aggressive land grabs couldn't be ignored by the established powers. This, in turn, led to the cafeteria monitors, France and Britain, stepping in. All right, all right, enough with the history lesson. Let's fast forward through this slower than molasses in January intro and get to the funny part already. Long after the fireworks of World War II had fizzled out, a little old man with a face redder than a borscht beet shuffled into the priest's office. Guilt gnawed at him worse than his dentures. The priest, a wise old soul with a twinkle in his eye, ushered him in. Father. The old man confessed, 
Back when the whole Nazi business was going down, a young farmhand with legs that went on for miles came knocking on my door one night. Scared out of her overalls, poor thing. So, being the good Samaritan I am, I hit her. In the hayloft, of course. Kept her safe and sound from those pesky Messerschmitts. The priest chuckled. Ah, that's a noble deed, my son. No need to feel any guilt for helping someone out in a pinch. But father... The old man mumbled, shifting uncomfortably. It seems she got a mite grateful. Started showing her appreciation in ways that, well, let's just say she showed her gratefulness in physical pleasure. Happened a few times a day, and even twice on Sundays. Bless her heart. The priest raised an eyebrow. Well, those were stressful times, son. Two young people cooped up together, scared of those pesky bombs. Completely understandable. No need to dwell on it. Relief washed over the old man's face. Thank you, Father. You've lifted a huge weight off my shoulders. Just one little thing, though. Yes, my son. The old man leaned in conspiratorially. Should I tell her that the war ended 20 years ago? If you liked our joke, then please watch our next joke by clicking here.